to start off the first article with just talking about the housing shortage and, and you know, talking to you about that, Arnie, um, start to see more and more home buyers not be able to find the inventory that they're looking for, running into, you know, multiple offer situations, and, and again, that's not happening in every price point, more likely to happen, you know, in the average and lower price points, um, you know, but inventory still continues to be a problem. I'm sure you guys are qualifying buyers that are going out there and looking for homes and not, not able to find the right, right home or not able to get one under contract. Right. It's still very frustrating for a lot of buyers out there that are finding the home they think they want and, and you know, they, they're getting beat out right now by other people. So, um, you know, sometimes it's best to really get pre-approved and have everything done so that you can compete with, like, the, with the cash offer. And, 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 be, and have your stuff set up and, as opposed to, or maybe compete with somebody else that's not pre-approved. And there's a difference between pre-qualified and pre-approved. And then so the less contingencies you can put on the offer, you can probably... Yeah, the, the there's no chance. question yeah. about that. And, and I'll tell you, I think that's an important point to let people know because it, you, when you go out to make a home purchase, sometimes people say, okay, well now I found the house and I'm going to go out and get approved. Well, when you have three months of inventory in the mid-level price ranges like we have, so the, you know, the average two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 homes out there, um, you know, sometimes in some neighborhoods that average is $150,000, whatever the average is in that neighborhood, uh, if you're coming in and then saying, okay, well, let me t take a day or two to get pre-qualified, you're actually opening it up for competition. And what's happening in a lot of scenarios is that that's exactly what happens. Another offer shows up. When you, if you'd have had your stuff put together right. immediately, you, you'd have been in a much better shape. Yeah, no doubt. You'll, you're you're going to have a lot cleaner offer. And what's happening is the sellers can, p can be picky right now, which is crazy, and uh, be able to uh, wear in prior markets they were just happy to get an offer now they're like ah, I'll wait for the next guy or, or they'll stall or right. wait for another offer exactly. or say no I'm not going to do that unless you show me that you, you know without a loan commitment or without appraisal contingencies the sellers are starting to ask for removing some of those contingencies to make the offer you know a little bit fa better in their favor and I think you're seeing that you know a lot more common in um, you know, in, in the lower price ranges, you don't see it as much if you're looking at million dollar homes. Yeah, but 250, 300 is, is where you're going to see that a lot. But but tell people you know what they should do. So so instead of just going and get your credit run, you should go through the whole underwriting process. The whole possible. underwriting process, and um, I can just tell you that um, you know m more common. It's really uh, people tell you go get pre qualified. Okay, well I can. Take a call in right now, and I can pre-qualify somebody in probably about sixty seconds. Right, okay. but, but pre-qualified, but but there's certainly a chance that something they told you might not be accurate. Exactly, because the pre-qualification. I didn't ask all the on, questions that I should right. have asked. Or whatever. The pre-qualification is based on the information the borrower gives you, right. and, and then of it's course not, not documented. Correct. Until that's verified correct. and documented, you, you can't guarantee that somebody qualifies for a loan. So if somebody calls you up and says, "Hey, Arnie, I make a hundred thousand dollars a year." And you run their credit, right. and their credit's good, and they tell you they make the money, and then come to find out, oh, they're commissioned. Right. Half of their income can't count, right. or they write off a lot, or right. then all of a sudden, uh-oh, they can't buy. Right. You know, or they can't buy what we thought they could buy. Right, and then, you know, that happens a lot. We actually had a guy that was pre-approved through underwriting on a contract. The contract fell through for some repair issue. So he was, which, which we're running into more. It seems we, like we because the sellers way. don't really want to budge and right. they don't want to fix anything because right. they know the market's in their favor. Right. So it fell through. So he's back on the market. Then he finds another house, but he forgets to tell us that he switched jobs. And his job's not starting until September. Well, that's a big issue. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a job. You don't have income. How are you going to pay for it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? It kind of brings back that point, though, about the repairs. It, you know, and it, so if you're a home buyer and you're looking at how competitive this market is and you come across a house that needs some repairs, um, you can certainly attempt to negotiate and see if the seller will take care of them. It obviously depends on what the terms of the contract are because every contract's different. Right. But, but um, in the grand scheme of things, we see buyers cancel way more often than they should for things that are, they're going to find on either the next house that are common and they're just not willing to listen to their agent or their inspector. Right. Or that really shouldn't blow the deal up because by the time they find the next home, it's going to be more expensive. A right. couple of, of, of examples. You know, for, let's say you got $5,000 in repairs, right? And the buyer wants the seller to pay those. And the right. seller says no. Well, the buyer gets all heated and emotional instead of thinking logical about the math, you know, and, and the market. It says, well, forget it, then we're going to kill the deal. So then they go out and they decide, okay, well, instead of finding two fifty, we're going to find stuff at three hundred now because we want something perfect. So they're going to spend more than they really should, 
Right. Um, and, and, and then that $5,000 issue is likely just as common in that price range. You're, you're not going to buy a house that doesn't have something that you're going to have to deal with. It's just, right. it's just common. Unless you're buying a brand new, you know, multi-million dollar home that's perfect, you're, you're going to have some things that you have to work on over time. And, and a buyer will cancel it. Then they'll go out and appreciation that we're seeing right now, sometimes one or two percentage points a month. Within one month, you right. might have, of you continuing to search, you wiped out that $5,000 repair just in appreciation. That's not even counting interest rates. Right, right, right. I wish I had the the, uh, the PowerPoint about uh, you don't close the day. This is how much more it's going to cost you tomorrow or whatever. I mean, it's, in, it, right, it, yeah. in, in a market where values are rising and, and where interest, interest rates, rates are rising, rising. Exactly. it's the, dump, the the buyers canceling for little things. Now, granted, okay, if it needs $30,000 in work, all right. But 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 a thousand or two thousand or five thousand, some of these little repairs, it's the dumbest thing you could do. You are literally costing your family your net worth by canceling when you have some of those issues because it's going to cost that the next home. Not only are you going to have to have appraisal and inspection costs again, right? But you're going to have appreciation, so the value is going to go up. You're going to have interest right. rates that are going to rise, right? And you're continuing to make your landlord rich instead right. of buying a house. But I, but I get the consumer's mindset and the fact that. They think that, you know, they are in a position of negotiation. And so then they feel like they're getting, for lack of a better word, screwed if they just don't if, if, right. if they just bite the bullet. Yeah, they don't bite the but, bullet. But the reality is that's the market we're in. It's, that's not it's the market we're market. in. It might have been a market five years ago. Correct. Right? Okay. Yeah. Five but, years ago. And, and that's the tough part and, is because people are thinking that, oh, well, my friend told me three years ago when they bought, this is what they did. But that's right. different than today. And if you don't believe us or you don't believe, uh, you know, the, your realtor, just... You know, do some research. Go to the uh, there's a, the uh, I just saw an article where the uh, chief economist for the Florida Association of Realtors talks about how this he's really worried about the lack of inventory in the lower price range. Yeah, I saw yeah. the same article yeah. it, and it, it talked about not enough housing. Right. It talked about shortage of inventory. So this isn't something that that's just an anomaly with all the business that we do. Right. It's, it's across the board in, in right. every market in Florida. This this is this is the experience people are having, and I think that when you look at it like that. The consumer naturally thinks, "Oh well, a few years ago, that's what happened because that's that's what history has taught them." But but markets change; we're not in a vacuum. I mean, we're in the market. market a year ago is different than it is today. Right, we're in the market, and we do this for a living, and so we're confident in what we say. But if we're out car shopping, and somebody told us, "Hey, you better get this car. If you really like this car, I got another guy coming in about to put an offer on it. You probably go." Yeah, yeah, right. right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're in sales, right? That's right, what we yeah. do, and right. it's what our companies do. But the reality is, if you look at if you look at you know our reputation, your reputation. Yeah. Google us. You know, we're, we're our companies aren't telling you these things. You know, right. w it, without genuity. I mean, we're, right. we're coming to you honestly and saying right. this is the this is the market you're in. Right. This is what you're up against. I mean, we wouldn't have all the endorsements we have if we were out there misleading people. The truth is that exactly. if you are in that situation, the shortage is is so considerable in those price ranges that you are going to miss out. And then we would feel bad if we didn't at least tell you this stuff now. Because you're going to set yourself up for failure by by either overbuying, or by paying more for the house. Because and, and we've run the statistics. What we found is usually if a, when a buyer finds the first home, if that one doesn't work out or they cancel, it's usually a couple of months. And a couple of months right now on a three hundred thousand dollar home could be ten grand. Right. Could be ten grand in appreciation. Mm -hmm. I mean that's how that's what the values are doing right, right. now. And quarter point interest rates probably reasonable in that time frame. Yeah, a quarter point. I mean, we're, we're definitely. Not, it's not going to like uh, like blow back to eight uh, percent. Here's the other thing that's funny. Okay, is this just this past week? I got a couple customers complaining because the rates were in the fours. Right. Instead you know? of in the three. <laughs> Instead of three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, when a few years ago they were in the sixes. They right. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> So yeah, they've come up a little bit, but they're yeah, not. They're, they're, they're going to come up. Up. They're going to get closer to the fives and maybe maybe break five. I don't think it's going to be. But still, you know, you're going to probably go from low fours to high five, to low four fives, you know, or maybe high fours. So that's the difference there. But then also you got, um, the, the you know, the, the values. And, and so, again, you know, if you if it's like you, you're hearing a couple salespeople on the radio talking this stuff and you don't, you know, necessarily totally trust us, that's fine. But just Google it. You'll see. You, you can, you can, you, we can, you can validate what, what we're talking about. Just on, we've, and we've on talked a lot on yeah. the show about the inventory and the shortage in certain neighborhoods. And that's why the builders are, are having their best years ever because right. they have to create the inventory. I mean, you look at right. certain Everybody areas has to have of Tampa to Bay. Yeah, if you look in certain areas of Tampa Bay, you really don't have opportunities for development. Obviously, everyone knows that there's a lot of development coming to downtown Tampa in the next few years. So there's, there's 
portions of land that are kind of, you know, segmented away by what Mr. Vinnick is doing downtown that are, that are going to be condos and towns. They still have hundred thousand dollar lots in South Tampa, right? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like in South Tampa, you're right. South Tampa, it, it, there there isn't a lot of availability. I mean, I'm seeing, um, you know, tear down houses going for about three hundred thousand dollars on right. small lots. Crazy you know, enough. builders yeah. that are buying stuff and speculating, and so a lot of it's interesting because, we, and we talked about this many times. But real estate is still so local. You can have, you know, our market is a big market. We've got a few million people that live here. You could just have something go on in Loops, and have the complete opposite going on in Saint, in a part of St. Pete. Or right. Odessa has some, you know, anomaly where it's really high inventory, and then you look at South Tampa, and there's no inventory. Or, you know, so so it's interesting when you look at the market as a whole, um, you, you get to see trends where even there's even little micro segments of of our real estate market locally where you know different neighborhoods do better than, than others. Right, right, because it's more desirable neighborhoods. So right, so on. better schools or better schools, or yeah. more employment or better traffic or wh whatever it is. So it's it's even when you'll hear us talk about you know some of these statistics, it doesn't necessarily apply to every single neighborhood. I mean, we we've had people take it that literally, like you know, well, hey, I heard you talk on the radio in my neighborhood. There's you know millions of homes for sale, nothing selling, and you know, so it, it doesn't apply to every neighborhood, but across the board, that's that's pretty much what we're seeing in the market. 